my name is Dan Han. I, I'm uh, the information security officer for the university. Uh, what I am in charge of is uh, I am in charge of uh, uh, the whole entire aspects of uh, uh, information technology security. Uh, and how do we uh, uh, maintain, um, how do we keep the good stuff within the university and keep the bad stuff out? So that will probably be the, the, the simplest answer that I can give. In my previous role, uh, I actually uh, functioned in a similar role. Um, I, I worked for the VCU School of Medicine. Um, I, I was the information security and infrastructure services manager there. Uh, it's a mouthful, but uh, uh, <laughs> but ba basically uh, uh, in that role, uh, I managed uh, all of the infrastructure uh, that, that includes the servers as well as the enterprise level applications uh, in the VCU School of Medicine. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I also developed uh, the information security standards based off of the university security standards for the School of Medicine. What I liked about uh, this position is number one, the scope. Uh, within the School of Medicine, obviously, you know, we are dealing with uh, only about 2,000 faculty and staff, uh, as well as eight, eight, 800 students. So, uh, over here, obviously, you know, the scope has grown exponentially uh, to uh, over 10,000 faculty and staff and uh, over 30,000 students. So, the scope is it's definitely something that attracted me to this position. Uh, in addition to that, um, uh, you know, this, this, this position really offers a more focused approach on uh, information security and the, the true enterprise uh, uh, management of information security. Uh, and that's, that's not something that I was getting over at the School of Medicine. Many aspects of the infrastructure is actually managed uh, through the university. For instance, uh, the networking services, uh, uh, telecommunications, um, as well as uh, some of the core storage uh, uh, infrastructure are all managed through, through the university and you know, we really had very little visibility into that um, aside from you know, just, just the basic management. At the School of Medicine, I did not get this type of exposure, but I did get, ex get the exposure uh, to faculty and staff. So you know, in, in a sense, we were the first line of defense, if you will, um, uh, that, that, that really helped to um, uh, uh, that really helped to, 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 to bring together technology and uh, our core operations, which is you know, the, the research, clinical, and education. So uh, that, that part I do miss sometimes, but uh, uh, overall, I, I, I'm still very happy with my decision. What is an information security officer? So in my mind, an information security officer is someone who um, is in charge of the protection of, it, of an organization's informational assets. And what I mean by informational assets is, you know, the, 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 the information that the organization uh, uh, holds near and dear, uh, the information that can be com the competitive advantage of an organization. Uh, so for instance, in our institution, uh, our information uh, uh, assets uh, would include um, the proprietary research information. Uh, clinical information, uh, maybe some proprietary educational information that we don't want uh, other people to have. So, so you know, the, as an information security officer, this person is going to be in charge of protect, of protecting these information uh, uh, from unauthorized access uh, or acquisition from uh, uh, from the bad guys, uh, if you will. Um, in addition to that. Uh, the information security officer also needs to make sure that the information is securely delivered to our constituents, to the people who actually need access to these things. Uh, so um, when we really talk about information security, um, I think many times people will think that, okay, information security is something that, uh, uh, that really you know, focuses on keeping the bad guys out. Or, you know, if you if you go and talk to some of the faculty, you know, maybe, maybe their perception of information security is a roadblock, and that's certainly not the case. And uh, uh, you know, and that uh, as a good information security officer, I would think that a person sh should be able to prove that although we can keep the bad things out at the same time, we can also uh, uh, keep the good things in and make sure the delivery of those things uh, are 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 as efficient and as effective as possible. 
whether if the information security officer position is a enforce, enforcement position or a educational position, that really depends on the organization that you are working in. So in this particular organization, uh, this position will probably focus a little bit more on education uh, than, than, than enforcement. Uh, as you know, within this organization, we have assurance services, we have compliance services, uh, which are both uh, business units designed with inf uh, designed to enforce uh, uh, any type of information security standards, uh, as well as some, some education. Now, in this role, in this particular uh, information security officer role, uh, I believe that it is our duty to um, educate our users uh, and uh, uh, make them aware of the threats and risks uh, with you know, I improper protection of information and what that can lead to. Okay, so I have um, laid out a brief roadmap of what I would, what I would like to do within the next five years. And uh, uh, these, you know, the, uh, I, I broke things down into three different categories. You know, there are technical controls that we can put in place. So technical things that I want to do, there are formal things. And what I mean by formal are the, 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 the information security standards, the procedures, guidelines, uh, policy, and so on and so forth. And there's also, also an informal aspect, which is probably what I want to focus on the most. And the informal aspect, what I mean by that is uh, really the culture. The culture and, and, and the awareness uh, within, within the university uh, on, on information security. So um, what I would like to accomplish first is to really collaborate with as many, as many business units um, as possible and try to drive through this uh, message of information security within the organization. Um, so what I have done so far, um, I have been uh, in contact with uh, uh, human resources. Uh, I have been in contact with the VCU health systems, and uh, I have been in contact with uh, uh, various uh, units within technology services, uh, and trying to look for collaboration points where we can truly collaborate and try to drive this message across. And uh, you know, what, what I what I view my role as is, um, you know, an, an educator, like I said before, and also a collaborator. I want to be. I want to be able to bring everybody to the table, and 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 and. Uh, um, I believe. I strongly believe that if I can make sure that the business unit heads are aware of the importance of information security, then that information will permeate down and be disseminated to um, to 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 their to their employees. So uh, I believe that with a better awareness. With a better awareness uh, within the university, we will be able to um, be safer overall because ultimately it is not technology that um, will ensure security because technology can always be circumvented. If somebody wants to get, get to your data, if someone, somebody wants to steal your information, they will always get to it. Ultimately, it's all, it all depend, depends, on, depends on the human because, I mean, we, we are the variable. I mean, for a computer, you can you give it a specific input, it's going to spit out a specific output. But for human, you give it a specific input, depending on the variances, the, the mood we're feeling, and the knowledge we have, we're going to give ver a variable outputs. So education is going to be a huge piece, and uh, that's, that's, that's going to be my uh, our primary focus. Um, now, as far as the formal and technical uh, uh, controls go, um, one thing, one thing I, I do want to focus on is mobile devices, uh, because uh, the general trend within the in industry is that we're moving to a borderless organization. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, information is flowing everywhere. You know, people are telecommuting, there are people who are uh, uh, using mobile devices, um, and how are we going to uh, adequately ensure that we can still deliver these information, or deliver the, the, the information people need to do their jobs uh, to them, Without uh, causing a security concern for the organization, so that that is going to be something that uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to tackle as well. Um, and uh, finally, uh, for the for the formal piece of the uh, uh, of my plan, I guess um, really I, I want to have a more perhaps a more flexible set of standards, not necessarily um, not necessarily pinpoint on what type of technology we should use, but perhaps a O overarching meta standard that can be interpreted uh, by different schools uh, to so, so so that so that they can 
they can use those standards to uh, uh, conduct their own procedures versus trying to make things too stringent. And, and a lot of times, those, those things will not work. So that's my grand plan for the next five years. So <laughs> I think I've benefited quite a bit from you know, having to work with technology services folks and having to work inside of ECU for quite, you know, quite some time. One thing that I, um, that I, I think I am is, you know, I, I am a very adaptive person. So I, 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 can, I can adapt to different types of cultures and different types of organizations. And that's, that's certainly the case. Um, and aside from that, you know, I mean, one, one thing that I, um, <laughs> one thing that I, I'm truly surprised about is how many good places you have around here to eat. I love food. So, as you can tell, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean the, the 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 restaurants are great. So that's um. In my off time, I I like to read on uh, uh, specifically on business cultural books. I, I I know that that sounds very dry and I sound like a nerd, but uh, that is really something that I, I'm interested in. The human factor. You know, any organization, because I mean, you can you can lay out a beautiful plan on paper, but ultimately it's up to the human, the people to 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 carry that out. I also enjoy movies. You know, I I I love uh, um, any type of action action adventure flicks. You know, so that's 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 always something I like. Um, other things, oh boy, <laughs> I'm proud to be a Ram. <laughs> Been here for. Uh, for a long time, and uh, um, you know, I, I, I pretty much grew up in Richmond. I went to VCU for both my undergrad and graduate graduate degrees. My undergraduate degree is actually in information systems, and an interesting story I can tell you about my undergraduate degree. Oh boy, uh, it took me seven years to complete because I was working full time on the other campus and uh, uh, going to school part time. And one great thing that I think uh, uh, the university is doing this. Uh, the university is providing us with opportunity to learn. Ultimately, I, I think life is, a, is really a learning experience, and and and, and uh, you know, to be able to learn from the uh, some of the greatest pro professors um, uh, in the university is uh, is just 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 truly a enjoyable experience. I'm finishing up my second second graduate degree right now, and I'm thinking about uh, going back for uh, for a PhD. So, I haven't decided yet. Maybe go for a third. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs>